Welcome, Welcome back. back! This week we are introducing you to our talented security team here at the farm. Yes, we'll be talking about um, our five livestock guardian dogs that we have on the farm. Um, and we could not farm without these five. Um, previously, now, any any time. So it's because of them we're able to farm successfully. <laughs> of um, livestock guardian dogs all of them are particular breed so they're bred to guard the livestock that that we have um, we chose them because they uh, their temperament so they're very good around animals when they're trained properly um, they're very docile and calm around their animals and they bond really well so um, if you yeah if you bring them up and you train them properly they'll bond to the livestock not people, so they'll consider their livestock uh, their family. So they protect them like their own, which is very important. They're also, um, they bark, right? So they protect their area and their family by barking. And um, so that's a big, big thing with this breed. Um, you don't want to have them if you have neighbors close by that are annoyed by barking, because they bark a lot, mostly at night. So the breed is primarily nocturnal. Um, they work at night and sleep during the day. Um, which is very important since most of the predators for livestock, uh, whether they be coyotes, wolves, cats, birds, um, owls are a big one, um, are, are active at night. Um, and also very important with these this breed, um, all our dogs live full time outside with their family, their farmly, um, and summer, winter, whenever. It's important um, this breed, or the livestock guardian breeds, uh, have a double coat. So come winter time, they actually have two coats of fur, a nice uh, thick undercoat and a kind of hairier overcoat. So that protects them very well. They actually function a lot better in winter than they do in summer because mm -hmm. uh, of their thick coat. Yeah, their favorite season is winter. They love it. And yes. it's funny because some people look at them in winter outside and we, you know, we, we have heard from other farmers, they've had complaints about their dogs being outside. But these guys, they're just super happy to be in the snow. We, they need a little bit of um, protection in the summer because it gets really hot. So we make sure we bring them every day to the creek to cool down a little bit. Or they always, swim. yeah, they always have yeah. a pool, the, the sheep. Yeah. The, the ones that live with the sheep have a always have a pool available yeah. to them. Access to water or and shade. shade. Yeah, so that, that's a lot more important to save these dogs than you know trying to keep them warm in winter. Yeah, they're warm by themselves. They're fine. Yeah, you know they they love it in winter. Also, this breed is it, um, they're very intelligent and they require a large area to roam. So that's that's a big thing with them. They're definitely not not like not breed, but the livestock guardian breeds that that we have. Um, they don't like to stay in one place at one time. So um, yeah, so it's very important that they have a large space and they each have their own uh, ways of getting out. So they're also, <laughs> so that's what the sheep, the sheep are really easy to contain. It's the dogs that we have to really uh, work hard to contain within the fences because yeah. they will stay, they stay near the sheep, but they also like to roam around um, the area that the sheep are in. They so, have their own idea of a defense. Exactly. Yeah, they don't so, listen to us. And different breeds of the livestock guardian dog um, function differently. So some mm. like that larger, like the Akbash that we have, they like the larger area, whereas Maremmas tend to stay a lot closer to the flock. Um, um, and, and which also, again, if you have them together, they work really well together. adopted from the SBCA. He was our very first dog ever. Um, we bought to, adopted him from the SBCA and I was, I was working as a forest engineer at the time and I also wanted a buddy to come in the bush with me um, to help, just as a buddy and to help with bears and cats and what, whatever. I and think at the time we were looking at a, a farm. Properties. So our yeah. intention was to start a farm. We were already looking at properties as well. So we knew a livestock guardian dog would be uh, for us. We definitely don't recommend 
adopting these dogs as pets. They're Never, not really no. meant to be living in city limits. Or, Inside yeah. or anything. So, But as a bush dog, it was good. So I would take him and he'd be in the bush 8 hours a day. And he'd come home 8 to 10 hours a day, 12 hours a day. And he'd come home and be exhausted. So it worked for the time while we were looking for property. Yes. Um, yeah. And then... Um, so yeah, because he was our first and he was more of a pet than any of the others, um, we trained him differently. We trained him well, so he knows a lot of tricks. Up high! Uri! Yeah! <laughs> he knows all the simple basic commands. You know, sit, lie down, all that stuff. Lie down! <laughs> Boy! Uri! Up! Good! Boy! He's very smart, very smart. Um, yeah, and then when we moved... We bought our property in 2015. That's when Udi became um, guardian. Dog. Yes, part-time, yeah. part-time forest engineer, part-time guardian dog. And that that's come really handy because he's got a really good push sense here. Mm-hmm. So when we go for walks, he usually comes with us here into the bush as well, which is really nice to have. So we know, you know, if, we, if there's a bear or something around, he, he finds that really quickly. Yeah. And um, he has also saved us a few times already. Yes. Yeah. yeah, so yeah, yeah the, when we first moved here to Blahadatni, um, there's no fences, no nothing, and we're right on the, the edge of the forest of Crownland. Yeah. Um, so we knew there'd be issues with animals, but I think it was the second, first or second night. Yeah. First yeah. night, yeah. During the first week, we had three different bears visiting us. Yeah. Three different bears. That, that, we were like, oh my God, what did we get into? Yeah. But these guys took care of it pretty fast. Yeah, the first encounter was in the middle of the night. It was pouring rain. We went out um, in the middle of the night and um, saw a bear. So we yelled we, the keywords. Well, we yelled Udi's name and then the B word. And he saw right away. He went went after it. Uh, the bear had turned around and went to smack Udi. But Udi kept on it and jumped on the bear's back and chased him right up the hill out of the way. So we didn't we didn't see that one we didn't see again. Um, yeah. Yeah, yeah, he got the message pretty quick. So that's the Udi. Uh, oh his name is Udishenya. That's so that's why. Aras are we are we are trying to think of a name when we first bought him. Yeah, the first time we took him for a walk, uh, where we were and yeah, I just thought about different names and then for, for some reason I mean you've already you've always told me about your village and how you when you grew up you had really good memories here so the name Utushenia just came to me and yeah I like, well, let's name him Utushenia and, and it, then Uti for short yeah it, it's name it's uh, it means you know peaceful and calm and and, and just kind of tranquil so that's that was Udi even as a puppy eight months old very calm and peaceful and mm. yeah it suits him very well so now he's back He's home finally, so <laughs> yeah. He's back yeah. In yeah, he's a good boy. Good boy. So that's Udi, and Udi, Udi works with Utka. So oh, this is Utka. Uh, Utka means duck in Russian, and that's because he is our duck dog. So him and Udi work together on the farm, um, protecting the duck and the the perimeter so Utka, all the birds yeah all the birds yeah all the birds, <laughs> yeah. the birds. <laughs> uh, Utka, we so all our dogs were um, adopted none were from breeders Utka um, was from a local neighbor in Cherry Creek him and his brother Arlo came to us um, and Utka yeah he was eight months old when we got him uh, we got him in 20 2019 so he's now yeah two, almost three years old him and Arlo um, Utka is an Akbash, so that's that's a breed that really likes to wander. He wanders a lot. Yeah. So some of the characteristics, like you can see, compared to our other dogs, yeah. he's got a thinner body. Some people see it, and then they're like, "Oh my God, you're not feeding this poor guy." Well, we he eats a lot. A he, lot. Yeah. So we're feeding him quite a bit every day. He eats as much as he can, he wants. And but that's the shape of the body. He's he's uh, thinner. He can run fast. He can he he, he roams a lot. He's yeah. the one that roams more than any other dog. Yeah. We, have. yeah, we he, let him do yeah. what his instinct um, does, and yeah. he didn't require much training actually. He came to us, and there was a few a few you know leave it and a few this and that where we had to train him. But for the most part, his temperament was incredible. He's very mm. docile. Yeah. Um, very good around the animals. So. Yeah, and right away he was protective of the chickens and the yeah. and the ducks. And, yeah, he yeah. goes and they trust him. So yeah. he goes and he lays right in the middle of where all the birds are, and they treat him like a bird. So they'll 
Mm-hmm. They'll, um, well, they get upset when he lays in their palm sometimes, but <laughs> for the, otherwise they don't mind that he's there and they'll just walk around him. Um, and since we got Utka, Uti has been doing much better. You know, he's been a perfect partner for him. Mm-hmm. So the two of them together work really nicely together. Really yeah. Well. When one, when Uti runs a lot and gets tired, yeah. then Utka is the one on alert, and so he'll he's on alert. So then they rest at different times, which is really important. Oh, yeah. Minimum number of livestock guardian dogs you want is two, so that they always they can help each other. So this is our next dog, Bande, or um, uh, Bande Khoda. That's what I named her. <laughs> and she is. Um, She's, we got her in 2017. Mm-hmm. And so she's seven years old yeah. now. Yeah, so she yeah. came uh, because our flock of sheep was growing pretty big and we needed a bit more protection. And these guys, like we talked about, they work really great as a team. So we have three that live with the sheep. Um, mm-hmm. Bande is the only female of our pack of five that we have on the farm. Um, and these three are incredible, the ones that work with the sheep. So they're always working, as you see, she's going yeah. to they, investigate. They found a bear and they're all distracted. Yeah. They, they tree a bear right there. Yeah. Uh, actually, I'll show you some footage of that. Uh, the, tr- the bear is up on the tree and the, the, three, dogs dogs, the three dogs are <laughs> circling around underneath. Um, when we have um, many sheep, uh, you know, you frequently get coyotes coming in and trying to snatch, and, uh, snatch a sheep. And with these dogs working uh, as a, when they work together, they somehow, it's like they have radios on, it's like they talk to each other. So when they, there's some coyotes or when they hear coyotes, instead of, you know, just um, running toward where the noise is or running toward one coyote, they, they basically, first of all, make sure everybody in the team is alert, right? So they get each other, they're like, okay, we're under attack, you know, get in, get in position. And then they all go in different position. So there's, there's the flock of sheep and then they will surround the sheep in different p- positions and then the coyotes will try from different spots but every way they come there's one dog protecting it. It's in the, uh, yeah. yeah, like Yvonne is a Marema so he tends to stick closer to the flock. So mm-hmm. he's the one that's always in with the flock yeah. and does not leave far from them. Yeah, he literally like embeds in yeah. there. Yeah, yeah whereas Bande and yeah. Arlo, the other two that work um, with the sheep, um, they both go to their points, Bandai, so it's, it's really incredible. And as soon as so, and again with the pack of three, we two of them can rest while one is on alert. So when that one alert barks, the other two are up like an instant and and at their at their um, their positions. So it's ah, I just it's so incredible to watch. Um, yeah, so always working. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, and she also, because she was three when we got her, we didn't really know her history very well. She wasn't bonded with the sheep as well. Mm-hmm. So that took time for her to make that bond and realize, okay, this is my family. This is where I stay. So I think that was most of the headache with Band-Aid. Yeah, at first she used to try to come to us. Yeah. Like so she, was, I guess she was really close to a family. So that's one of the people. problem. If you, if you adopt a guardian dog that was with the family, they almost have to, you almost have to untrain them mm-hmm. so that they go back to their flock. Exactly. And that, that was so yeah, hard. It's, it's a really hard thing to do. Especially when their dogs, yeah. if they're bonded to people, they're, they're just so friendly and so loving, like all the livestock guardian dogs are. Mm. So it was very hard for us to, to start our training with her and not bond with her. So yeah. ignore her requests for cuddle and ignore all that and, um, and keep her with the sheep. It, that was a really, it was yeah. tough, but she learned, she learned very fast. And, um, now she considers them her family. Yeah. Yeah. Now she comes and says hi and goes back to work right yeah, now. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. This is Ivan. He's our oldest boy. Um, he came to us in uh, 2017, I think. Um, he came, him and his mom came to us, um, and along with two of our ewes, our oldest ewes, Govey and Blindy. Yeah. yeah. There were these nice farmers out in Armstrong, I think. Yeah. And uh, right. they were shutting down the farm, and they really wanted to find a good home for them. So I went there and visited them and talked to them, and they were really concerned. They wanted to make sure they go to a good farm. And so we, we told them our story and what we are doing. And so, anyways... They basically let us adopt them. Yeah, we're and, so uh, grateful yeah. too. The sh- and the sheep again. They were yeah. They were <laughs> bonded with the him and his mom Nikita. Yeah. Um, we're already bonded with these sheep. So, um, <laughs> yeah. So it worked really well. In- incredible trait. These guys like so good at protecting sheep. So Ivan yeah. is now he's now ten years old, and um, so he was five when we adopted him. 
And Nikita was 10 when we adopted her. So she was already older, but very, again, very useful to have around because she she was the head girl um, and she was very good for training everybody else. She trained all of her dogs. Yeah, she yeah. did. And she lived with us until just last summer. And then yeah. she finally, you know, got too old, but she passed um, with her family here um, with the sheep. And um, yeah, we're grateful for all the hard work that she did. Last but not least, that's for sure. Um, this is Arlo. So he came to us uh, with Utka. Um, he came to us in 2019. He was the same, eight months old, same same as Utka. Um, he's an Akbash. Um, yeah, and uh, he was. He he was fun. He was fun to train too. He yeah. took a bit of training, not as much as Bande, but it was a bit of a headache at first. Yeah. Um, yeah, like I mentioned before, Yvonne was getting old, so we wanted to um, get another big guy to help with the sheep, because um, we knew we'd need, yeah, we'd need help. And uh, and lucky Arlo was it. His temperament with the with the sheep was great. When that's why that's why I chose him for that. His teammate is Bande. Yeah, they, all, they so, always do everything together. Yeah, but yeah. I think yeah, because they're young, the younger ones, and again, yeah. she's the female. Um, uh, yeah, that they uh, um, they're bonded. But it's I'm really impressed with Arlo. When we come in, and uh, Arlo knows us very well. He's very good. I spend a lot of time with him. I trained him. He knows me well. Um, even when we come in to clip feet, or if I come in to clip feet, mm. um, just the action of me grabbing the sheep to turn her over. He gets very protective and he even comes mm. sometimes like he comes and he'll put his mouth on my arm like stop that That's my family. Don't do that. Mm. He never like not aggressive not mean but he does that um, That warning, you know, yeah, so you tell him good job Arlo. That's good. That's good. It's okay And we pet him we pet the sheep and he's okay, but um, but just seeing that was I was happy to see that. Yeah. Thank you so much for watching another one of our videos. Please don't forget to do the like, subscribe, or <laughs> share all the goodness. And yeah. yeah, if you have any questions or any uh, anything that you want us to look into or talk about, don't be shy and give us a shout. And um, yeah, we'd love to hear from anybody. <laughs> yeah. All right. Bye. Bye. <laughs> Go get the bear. Oh. Oh.